Hey all, welcome to ShareTrek. This is Raj here. Thanks to the uh, conferences that take place in the industry from time to time, we get more information. Today I'm going to talk about CRISPR therapeutics and their therapy CTX112. I'll talk about what it is for, where it is in terms of its uh, performance in the clinical trials uh, for the main indication and also where it is with, with regard to the targeting of lupus which is the secondary indication that uh, CRISPR therapeutic is working on with the same uh, therapy. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. The 2024 American Society of Hematology Conference is ongoing. That's where we got all the information about LifeGenia uh, and uh, Zinteglo with regard to Bluebird Bio. And it's very interesting to note that there is going to be more information coming out about various therapies, various gene therapies in this conference. And I'm going to bring as many of them to you as possible in easy to digest manner. Today, I'm going to discuss a press release that came in from CRISPR Therapeutics uh, thanks to this particular conference. Let me first show you the press release and then I'm going to give you a summary of what it exactly means from an investor perspective. Well, here we have the press release which came in from CRISPR Therapeutics. And what they have to say here uh, is all about CTX112. But from an investor's perspective, I have tried to distill from this what we need to take from here. So I'm going to talk about that in the next few minutes. Uh, for those of you who want to actually see this press release, I'll put a link to this in, a, in the description section. So let's start at the basic CTX112 is a next generation wholly owned allogenic CAR-T product candidate targeting CD19. It includes CRISPR-Cas9 edits to evade the immune system, enhance CAR-T potency and reduce CAR-T uh, cell exhaustion. It's designed for use in adult patients with relapsed or refractory CD19 positive B cell malignancies after at least two prior lines of therapy and being tested for systematic lupus, that is SLE. So these are the two indications that we are looking at. If you look at the data presentation that was given in the press release, of course, you, you can find the link to the press release in the uh, description section. Uh, phase one slash two clinical trial results presented at the 2024 uh, ASH annual meeting uh, shows that uh, the efficacy in uh, re relapsed uh, refractory CD19 positive B cell malignancies uh, is pretty good. Uh, it was well tolerated uh, safety profile with no dose limiting toxicities, grade greater than three infections or graft versus host disease. Because none of these things happened, uh, I think the safety profile is pretty good. Uh, the other thing that came out was that 65, uh, 67% objective response rate and 50% complete response rate was observed across all dose levels in the trial. Now, the question is, what is an objective response rate? So for a quick refresher, the percentage of patients in a clinical trial who experience a measurable reduction in tumor size or disease burden, uh, which is either partial or complete response after treatment. It reflects the therapy's ability to achieve any level of tumor shrinkage. So it's a lower standard as compared to the complete response rate or CRR. CRR is the percentage of patients who achieve complete remission, meaning there is no detectable sign of the disease following treatment. It's a subset of ORR that indicates the most favorable outcome. Durable responses include one patient in complete remission for over a year. Then we have the RMAT or Regenerative uh, Medicine Advanced Therapy designation, which has been awarded by FDA uh, to this therapy for treating relapsed and refractory follicular lymphoma and marginal zone lymphoma. These are the two conditions for which we have RMAT. The RMAT designation expedites development and regulatory review for promising therapies. To give you a context, uh, about the Regenerative Medicine Advanced Therapy designation, I would say that it's relatively selective. On an average, the FDA grants RMAT designation to around 20 to 25% of eligible applications. This figure can vary slightly year over year depending on the number of submissions and the strength of supporting data. And given the fact that there is going to be a new administration coming in, uh, I really like the fact that they got the RMAT already. So this is very important to qualify for RMAT, a therapy must show preliminary clinical evidence of potential to address unmet needs, 
uh, unmet medical needs in serious or life-threatening conditions. This means only a minority of regenerative medicine candidates with strong early clinical results and compelling unmet needs uh, reserve, uh, receive this designation. Only those become eligible. So uh, now, having said that, let us look at the clinical insight that we have from this press release. Dose-dependent efficacy seen at higher doses with improved CAR T cell expansion and persistence, and advanced CRISPR edits enhanced performance compared to earlier CAR T therapies. So the next gen is definitely superior to the previous one that we had, and the potential applications are beyond oncology because the same therapy is being tested for SLE, which is uh, lupus, with potential for additional autoimmune disease indications to be triggered off later on. In terms of future plans, broader updates on oncology and autoimmune indications are expected somewhere in middle of next year, and CRISPR Therapeutics aims to advance off-the-shelf CAR-T therapies to address unmet clinical needs. When you say off-the-shelf, it's basically allogenic. And uh, as if, if I was to summarize the whole press release and make it very concise, I think that it's a very uh, promising development. It's going to support the stock price for CRISPR. CTX112 represents a promising allogenic off-the-shelf CAR-T therapy leveraging advanced gene editing techniques to address difficult to treat cancers and autoimmune diseases. And the results that have been shown in this particular press release um, shows encouraging safety and efficacy uh, data, paving the way for potential transformative treatments. And uh, this would mean that for the relapsed and re refractory lymphoma, uh, we might get a monetization uh, uh, approval uh, in the very near future. As far as lupus is concerned, that is something in the works. And beyond lupus, once I think um, uh, the lymphoma monetization takes place, beyond lupus, there may be other uh, autoimmune diseases which will be identified uh, for uh, targeting with uh, CTX112. That's the way I understand this. So that's in a very brief summary. Now, before we leave, let's have a quick look at the uh, CRISPR therapeutics price chart to see if there is anything that we can make out from there just to be a comprehensive uh, outlook for uh, CRISPR. Let me take you to the Training View platform now. Well, here we are in the Training View platform. This is a one month chart, which means each of these candles is a one month candle. And you can see in the past, I had made a video where I said that we had this reverse head and shoulder pattern, which is very bearish. We could have had a severe drop, but that did not happen. And we have a consistent support. The next level of support is at 44.58. Now let us switch on uh, to a daily chart and see how, how it is progressing. So here we look at the daily chart. Each of these candles is a one day candle now. And you can see that we are very far away from our support, which is at 44.58. We are very close to the $50 mark, and I think that at this point of time, we should probably visualize uh, a minor resistance uh, taking place somewhere out here. I'll, I'll put the minor resistance at uh, this region, uh, one at uh, around uh, 55.14, and another one somewhere around... Uh, where, what is this going to be? Around 54.35. Once we break these two uh, areas, then I think we'll, we'll be in an even solid footing. And in order to see some positives, what I would like to do is I would like to draw a trend line and have a look at a possibility that we might be in a potential bull channel. Of course, this is just blue skying because the share price could come down further. We don't know. Uh, but right now, we have had a lot of higher highs and higher lows. So if the trend of higher highs and higher lows continues, then we'll be forming a bear ch bull channel, and that bull channel will enable us to break through above this. But right now, I do not see anything major to indicate that we are going to continue having this upward trend. Uh, overall, if the market sentiments are good and if the animal spirits persist, things will go very well for uh, CRISPR therapeutics. But among all the uh, stocks that we have in the genomic sectors out here, uh, I think CRISPR therapeutics is one of the best out there. And the key points to look forward to is uh, breaking through uh, 54.35 
and uh, 55.14 and converting them into a support. The MACD is bearish and the momentum is also dropping. So all this good news that comes in, uh, it's digested quickly and spit out. Uh, so things are not giving that much of a boost upwards. But the thing that you as a CRISPR Therapeutics uh, shareholder should look at, uh, I think, is the fact that we have a temporary floor out here, uh, which has helped us in this session uh, all the way from somewhere around 25th of November to date and we have not fallen below that so that's another way of looking at it and saying that okay we are very close to this floor we are going to bounce back up again and if this continues then the consolidation will be between these two levels uh, only days will tell as, uh, as the days go by we'll get some more information it's very difficult to make out valuation for these companies so that's all I have for you guys if I take a slightly broader view and uh, zoom out further and include more months into the mix. Now the chart that you are looking at here uh, starts from August 2023 onwards and goes to the present. So if you look at almost a year's time frame, then I would say that we are probably in a very attractive zone for dollar cost averaging. But again, this is my personal opinion and not financial advice uh, because the closer you are uh, to 44.58, it will be better to buy. And the closer you are uh, to 54.35, it would be better to sell. Depends on your risk profile. But if you are, uh, if you believe in CRISPR for the long term and your investment horizon is four or five years, uh, then probably you would like to accumulate small amounts over a period of time, um, dollar cost averaging, uh, little by little. Uh, that could also be very helpful. Uh, but again, all these genomic companies, they are fraught with risk and uh, you could lose all the capital or you could make a huge jackpot. So it's all very volatile. Uh, so be careful out there and be clearly aware of your risk profile and your objectives and stick to it. Uh, doing the good work, doing the right way is not very interesting and does not give much of thrills, but you will survive. But doing risky things definitely give thrills and that's why many traders end up overextending themselves. So that's a little bit of wisdom from my side. And friends, I'd like you guys to let me know what you think about CRISPR therapeutics and what do you think about CTX112. Please put your thoughts in the comment section. I always, read to la I always like to read your comments and um, uh, it helps me stay informed about how you are thinking. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.